<clears throat> right, brilliant. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, I hope that what I can share tonight can um, bring some value to um, people in the group. I've heard really, really good things about this group from Claire. Um, and like she said, I've, I've known Claire for cool, probably sort of about five years now. Um, we met through property education and through networking um, and kind of cross paths throughout, you know, the years of, of what we're doing and what's changing and everything. So it's really nice to come on tonight and, um, and speak on this event and um, yeah, share my journey really. Um, as cringy as the word journey is, it's my story, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's, there's been quite a few up and downs um there still is today i'm by no means done um with what i'm doing yet um but uh wanted to kind of encapsulate sort of where i've come and and where i've got where i'm going um so where i sort of started off i decided to like a lot of people invest in um some property education um with a property education company and that was the first sort of taste that I'd ever got of property before. I didn't even own my own home. Um, I didn't know what the sales process was. I, I had absolutely no clue about property whatsoever. Um, so for me, it was going to be something that I was going to put my work bonuses in. So my background is recruitment within the legal sector. I absolutely loved my job. Um, sales is, is what kind of gets me going. Um, I love the pressure, I love targets. And that actually works really, really well now into what I do every day. But the problem was that um, when my little girl came along, I had to answer to somebody else. And that was really, really tough when somebody else decided whether I had I could go and pick her up from nursery if she was poorly or somebody else. I had to ask someone else's permission if I wanted to go and see her in a nursery Christmas play or something like that. And that really didn't sit with me um, very well. So I decided that um, whilst I've been doing this property education, I've met a lot of people through networking who somehow did property full time. And I just couldn't understand it. I couldn't comprehend how they made a business out of it but uh but obviously you know a lot of us do so from that point i decided that one day i had pretty much had enough and um <laughs> wanted to walk out of my job my boss had said to me right you know think about it we really you know we're we're a corporate really want to work with working mothers in the workplace and all of those kind of things um and I knew once I left that office that I was never, ever going back in there ever again. And I went to a networking event that evening and uh, people were standing up going, you know, I do this in property, I do that in property. And I went, right, that's it. That's that's what I'm going to do. And I didn't tell my partner at the time um, because it was uh, it was quite a difficult relationship. And I knew that he wouldn't be very happy that I was doing that. So. Um, I basically just then had to think of a way that I was going to make this property education work for me and start my own business. And that is the six years that has taken me from that point to this point. So, oh, it's not moving on. Hang on, bear with me. Another thing you're going to learn, I'm absolutely terrible at technology. So I, I completely apologize for any mishaps that happened tonight. Right, okay, so um, what we're going to go over tonight with my story is um, where it all began and how I got to this point um, and my businesses. So one thing has, has been born out of the last business and it's come to where I'm at today. So Claire mentioned that I've got Central Sourcing, um, which is a sourcing company based in the Midlands. Um, we do everything from sourcing to full conversions um, and get it all signed off. We we're, you know, we take care of building control architects, all of those kind of things um, for our clients. We've also got Furnish My Property. So Furnish My Property does exactly what it says on the tin. Um, we furnish investment properties, predominantly HMO and service accommodation properties. 
and that's another way that I work with Claire as well. Um, she helps some of my clients that want to lease the, prop the furniture packs, um, but we also do interior design. So we'll do interior design plans for our clients and then we'll furnish to fit in with that plan. Um, and it's all from our experience of what works within um, HMOs and serviced accommodation as investors ourselves and as management agents. We've also got um, our managing um, property management agency. So we've got Rent Room, um, which started um, at the same sort of time as central sourcing. And then we acquired another agency last year, um, which was an absolute labor of love. Um, I've never experienced buying another company before, and it was pretty painful trying to do that through COVID. Um, but I'll, I'll sort of come on to that a little bit later. Um, talk a little bit briefly about our rent to rent portfolio. A hell of a lot of learnings there, big time. Um, it's sold as something that is extremely easy and hardly any capital down and it's all gonna be magic. Um, and I think for us, if we didn't have a HMO specialist lettings agency, um, it would have made it harder than, than it has um, at some point. So talk a little bit about our, our rent to rent portfolio, which is the vehicle that got me to a point along with the other companies that I was mortgageable and I could in start to invest in properties myself. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about the investments that we've got, um, what we're doing, and then um, the investments that we've got coming up and what we're moving on to. Um, and then sort of finish on our on our goals. And tonight it was really, really nice listening to what Claire was saying about the fact that you want a group that feels safe and feels like you can talk about what you're doing and um, people can be happy for you and champion you. And I don't know whether a lot of you had the same experience, but when I very first started in property, I got a hell of a lot of negativity. And then when I decided to start my own business, um, it came down on me even more. Um, everybody thinking that, uh, well, a lot of people thinking that I didn't know what I was doing, I wouldn't succeed. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and, and so it's, it's nice to speak in a group and get to a place sort of six years later, the people that I spend my time with now and the people that I network with and the people that I surround myself are really happy for me and I'm genuinely happy for them and it's quite a nice feeling um whereas I used to sort of get a bit of resentment because people didn't quite understand what I was doing so it feels strange um <laughs> when I was putting this presentation together today it feels a little bit strange because it feels like a powerpoint on all the things that are amazing about me um and that's not the case at all um it's you know you eat <laughs> I don't sit down and look at what I've achieved very often and go, you know, give myself a pat on the back and go, well done. Um, and it does feel weird going, right, let me tell you about all the fantastic things I've done. Um, but hopefully I can share the challenges that came with that, um, the learnings that I've learned from that. And obviously we'll, we'll still have lots more up and downs along the way, but hopefully, um, having the right people around us and also kind of analyzing things that have happened along the way can help us with resolving and finding solutions for those things. So here we go, where it all began. Um, so when I first started, um, as I mentioned before, I was completely unmortgageable. Um, I'd left my job, so I didn't have an income. Um, my savings dwindled extremely quickly um, and I thought wow what on earth am I going to do now so that was where central sourcing was um, born out of I as I said invested in property education and I learned from that that as cheesy as it sounds your network really is your net worth and I needed to be around the same people that I was going to learn off and that were going to encourage me, but also that I could do business with. So I got myself even more educated on um, what I could do within sourcing because I had no idea. As I said, I didn't have any idea about the sales process. Um, I didn't know how 
how to source the property, what to do, what to do for the client. So it was very important at the very start to get really, really clued up on what I had to do um, to become a sourcing agent um, and how I could then find the right people to be able to source the right deals to them. So I set up um, a couple of networking events. Um, I no longer do them because sometimes I don't have time to go for a wee anymore. So I have absolutely no time. Um, um, no, I do have time, but the, the little bit of extra time I have is, is now very much my family. So um, I prefer going to other people's networking events as opposed to running networking events now. Um, but we had AIMS, which was a day event where we all used to come together and we used to mastermind and we used to help each other. And it was quarterly, so it made us accountable. Um, and that was that sort of support network that even when we weren't at the networking events we still had each other to we had you know whatsapp groups facebook groups whatever that we could we could keep accountable on but also have that advice and, and help and everything um, and then i did networking events once a month where i could meet people that were either from my area or invested in my area so I'm based in the midlands now just outside Coventry um, but I'm originally from down south so when I moved up here, I moved up here for my ex-partner. I had absolutely no friends here. My family, closest family is about two hours away. It was just me and my little girl. Um, that was it. There was nobody else. Um, so it was about meeting other people, again, staying with the positive people because the, the people that I did have in my life were quite you know, not sure about what I was doing or you know, not confident in what I was doing. So. Um, having those you know events monthly were, were a big big help and then also like Claire mentioned earlier it was it grew my business because it helped I could meet contractors I could meet um, investors looking for property deals and that's what I did so I wanted to source specifically for clients um, rather than have just deals come through at a certain, you know, ROI percentage cash flow. I wanted to offer um, a different kind of turnkey investment um, for them. So that is where central sourcing was um, born. And uh, central sourcing as I said, doesn't have a massive investor database. I don't have a big list of investors and I have deals accepted and ping them out and it's, you know, first come first serve and everything. I have a small, um, very tight knit group of investors that I work with repeatedly. Um, and because I wanted to offer a turnkey service, for me, it was about building a relationship with them, a working relationship. It wasn't about, right, I'll just find you a property and get my sourcing fee. And there you go. Here's your property. You, you know, uh, you can find the build team. You can find the management agency. I wanted to provide all of that for them. Um, so if I was going to be finding these properties um, they needed to be the right properties in the right area that I was confident that I could then manage you know going forward at this point I had absolutely no idea how I was going to manage them um, I had no idea how the hell I was going to furnish them I didn't know I you know I'm not funnily enough I I'm, I'm not a trained builder um, so I didn't know about compliance and all of those kind of things the technical stuff that I needed to know the important stuff about regulation. So we, we specialize in HMO conversions um, and com commercial to residential. But when I say commercial to residential, it is still on a HMO basis. So they're mainly um, studios. Um, we don't go into flats. Um, we kind of, and I'll show you later on some of the projects that we're doing, we keep them as kind of HMOs, all bills included for a certain reason. So this is why sort of, you know, the title kind of rings true with the fact that we are, you know, everything HMO. So um, when I started off, um, it was a very, very different market. Um, I predominantly sourced in Coventry, um, but it is extremely competitive. 
um, there is a lot of other people looking for properties, either sourcing agents or investors, um, long time investors that have been around for years that the agents know can buy properties. So it's it's competitive. It's not impossible. I still source properties from Coventry City Centre, um, but I had to think on my feet and think, right, where else can I source? And so I started to look further afield and we cover all of Warwickshire now and we're starting to broach into Leicestershire. Um, and the places that I source a lot of the properties are not exactly where you'd think, right, that'll, that's where a HMO will, will work perfectly. Um, but somehow they do because there is a market for everybody and we cover the whole tenant demographic, um, which will tie into when I talk about the two agencies. We're also very aware that um, when you start looking at Warwickshire towns as opposed to a city centre, we've got a shelf life there. Um, we've got a line that we can't cross because otherwise we become our own competition. There is only so much stock in these areas and so much demand. So what we do is, is we still have Coventry, but we also have a lot of areas around Coventry that we find HMOs in. Um, as I said, when we started, it was predominantly your kind of, you know, our footprint here in the Midlands is terrace houses, you know, day in, day out. They work really well, you know, the, the kind of three bedroom, two reception room, kitchen out the back. And that was enough sort of six years ago was four bedrooms with a shared communal and a kitchen and a shared bathroom. Now that there is still a market for those, but um, the market's changed massively and there's a lot of competition out there with other landlords and other properties. Um, and also tenants want a little bit more as the market has grown. They've realised that they can get more um, and then, you know, for a less kind of price point. With our three to fours, it still works nicely because what we find is four people in a house sharing kitchen bathroom all of those kind of things it becomes like a family and they those houses have a really really nice feel um they tend to you know each tenant will cook every night and they become really close and they work out it's just like if there was four members of a family living in a three-bed terrace house they would work around each other with the bathroom and all of those kind of things so that isn't completely obsolete, but I don't go out specifically hunting for those sorts of properties anymore because what we've got is enough um, and there's still a market for it, but it's the way that the market has changed. We don't kind of, we don't kind of look for lots of those. What we tend to do now is with our three bed properties, we're turning them into um, four bed ensuite studios. So we're kind of splitting the house and some of those have to be three on suites, one off suite to make it work, because with the footprint of a terrace house, you'll know the, the box room at the back can be quite small. Um, so then we're having to think, right, OK, we can still give them a bathroom, but we need to sort of make it an off suite and make it work there. That works really, really nicely because it's Again, it's not too many people. We can get those four studios out of there. We can put in worktops, fridge freezers, um, wall mounted cupboards, but they've still got their kitchen space to share. They've still got their communal space where it's something that isn't their bedroom to come out and sit and relax or come and eat somewhere that isn't, you know, on their desk, on their bed. Um, and that's what we're doing with a lot of our, our properties now. Um, where we can, we're making sure that we get on suites in. COVID's been a massive game changer for us in the HMO market. Um, people want their own bathrooms. People want their own space. Um, they want to. They want to have something where, and obviously, <laughs> hopefully, I hope we never get locked down again. But when people are locked down they've got everything in their room there. Um, then we've got our bigger properties. So our, our bigger kind of 
now looking at the sort of semi-detached properties where we turn into three to five bed all on suites um, and then our, our really big properties you know four bed either detached or semi-detached properties um, where we are adding on suites to them, adding big value to them, because obviously a four bed house has a, a bigger purchase price. So we're having to add a lot of value to be able to, to make that work out with the figures. Um, and then I spent years um, sort of stopping at six because I was unsure about going past, you know, three generous planning and what that would entail and, you know, what would happen and like anything, if you just learn about it and you learn what planning want and how it can work and you know all of those kind of things suddenly a lot is opened up to you and a lot has I've had to change a lot of how I've you know the properties that I find and how I find them around an extremely hot market so there's properties now that I'm finding for clients or I'm buying myself that I never ever would have looked at in the past because they just were you know the price point was was way too high um whereas when we get planning we're looking at different lending so all of the deals that i source and still to this day um when i when i work out the numbers are all done on bricks and mortar um but we're now starting to move into commercial lending now the problem that we've had with commercial lending is in somewhere like coventry city center we know our commercial multiplier we know you know what we're going to end up pretty much for the done up value on a commercial valuation when we're then looking at the surrounding areas you know smaller towns around coventry and going into leicestershire there's no data there's no data because um either there's not a strong hmo market there because they're run the HMOs are privately managed, um, they're handed down from generation to generation, so there's never any sold price. Um, and so we've had to, we're in the process of trying to build our own kind of data and multiply with what we're doing. And that's that's been our journey from the sort of smaller three into four beds now, um, you know, to doing seven bed plus there's a project that, that I'm doing myself with one of my business partners at the moment, um, which is an absolutely stunning um, semi detached property with all original features, you know, mint and tiles is absolutely beautiful. I, you know, even though an investment is done with your head, um, I can't help but slightly feel it fall in love with the interior side. Um, and we're going to really, really make the most of those features. Um, but it's something that I never, ever would have looked at before because, um, A, I was scared of, of what Sweet Generous planning would entail. And B, we just didn't have the kind of um, the commercial multiplier there and, and the data to back up commercial valuations as well. So that gives a little bit of, of what we do within central sourcing. Also, our clients are all at very different stages. So I will take, I do take on new clients over the years because some of my clients go, right, you know, five's enough for me. That's that's what I want to do. Some people come to me and go, you know, I want 10, I want this. So once we get to that point, then I sort of take other clients on, on board um, and we start to build what, what they want to, to build. And they're all at different stages. So some people don't want to get to that licensing point. We cover uh, four different councils and um, in three of them, five rooms and above are licensed and one of them, it's still um, four beds are, um, sorry, four and above are licensable. And in one area, it's still four beds aren't licensed and some of my investors aren't ready to get HMO with a license. Um, but then they'll get that one and then they'll move on to a five bed and then you know move on, move on from that point. Uh, so a little bit on the numbers of, of what we've done in, in central sourcing. So this bit for, for me here is a little bit bittersweet because I'm extremely proud of those numbers and what we've achieved and what we've built in that time. 
but I will be completely honest and brutal, brutally honest with you with the fact that I spent far too long building other people's financial income. A, because I didn't believe in myself and I didn't think that I would be able to do it. And B, because I, I got really comfortable um, I got comfortable sourcing for clients. Once a client has bought a couple of properties, you know, it got to a point where I'd just send over the numbers to them and, um, yeah, I'll take it. You know, I don't even need to see it. I don't even want pictures. I know what you do. I know that you'll look after it. And I got really, really comfortable just sourcing property for other people. And I look at those numbers and I think, bloody hell, if I just at that point had a little bit more faith in myself that could have that could have not been mine because you know because I I enjoy sourcing for other people but I wouldn't have waited as long as I did to then start to become an investor myself um you know being unmortgageable had a part to play I'd spoken to people that right we can work around that we can do this we can do that um, but I think it just all came down to the fact that I was scared and I didn't think that I could do it. Um, I could do it for other people, but I couldn't do it for myself. Um, so it was kind of sort of doing those figures a couple of years ago that made me go, what on earth are you doing? You know, pull your finger out. It, you know, you started doing this so that you could build up um, your sort of financial future and you're still doing it for other people. Um, Central sourcing is a very much a business where I am the business. Um, if I stop doing central sourcing tomorrow, the guys will finish up the refurbs that we have going on, but then the, the company will stop. I'll have no income. There's nothing to fall back on. Um, so it's, it's something that is a vehicle because it's, May, it's helped me build a company where I had an income. Um, it's connected me with clients that um, have been valuable to me in the fact that some of them I now invest in property with um, and some of them have um, invested in, in, in my, um, my own purchases as well. So it's been massively valuable um, helping me meet people and, and grow what I do. Um, but as I said, it, it's, it's, it's not a business that I could step back from and it would still keep going. So I needed to think about what the next step was. Um, at the moment, you know, I'm, I'm very, very happy sourcing. It's, it's, a, it's a really nice company to kind of um, then sort of go along the process to what what else we do as well and kind of feed into that and I can you know see properties first I can I've got great connections with landlords and um, agents and everything in 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 the area um, I've got a build team that I work solely with um, I don't I just have one build team um, and it works really well for them because they know that they've got constant work and it works really well for me because I have um, I've been through the pain of working with lots of different builders. I've worked with builders that have not done a good enough job, um, which I just think is is not OK. Um, I've had builders that have taken advantage of me. I've had builders that have like WhatsApped me um, in the evening and said, oh, I folded my company today. I'm not coming in tomorrow right in the middle of a refurb. Um, you know, I've been through it all and it's been pretty, pretty painful, um, especially sorting everything out, because at the end of the day, if I've sourced somebody that project and I've put my name to it, I'm the one that has to sort it when the SH1T hits the fan. Um, luckily, we've come through that. And like I said, Touchwood, I'm extremely lucky to have the builders that I have now. Um, but we've got a great team that we constantly work with and we've got a great power team within our, our architect and um, building control and, and all of those kind of things. So then we move into the second part. So um, furnish my property. 
was born from central sourcing because once I'd sourced the property to our clients, I then had to furnish the property. Now, I have worked with nearly all of the furnishing companies and some of them did a great job. Um, some of them did an okay job and some of them didn't do the best job. Um, that was when I sort of thought, right, well, when I'm having to organize the furnishing companies, why can't I just organize the furniture? Um, so that is where Furnish My Property was born out of. We started doing furniture packs just for central sourcing clients. Um, from a selfish point of view, because we manage them, we wanted the right furniture that was practical, that was going to tie in with the interior of the property. Um, and, and so that was one reason why, why we sort of wanted to do it. Um, we then kind of, as we were sort of marketing ourselves and posting about what we do, people started to go, oh, who, who did your interior? Who did your furnishing? And then all of a sudden, ding, right, okay, there's, a need for this um and and that's where furnish my property was was born out of um from just doing our furniture packs to furniture packs nationally again that's had its its growing pains we're still quite a young company even though we've been furnishing properties right from the start um furnish my property has only really been going for two years now um we've had to work around you know all of a sudden you've got all this furniture and you need a unit um the guys that are delivering how we work around logistically going nationally um last week the week before last was a prime example um we had all those um storms and then we had the guys going up to scotland in luton vans um nearly getting blown off the motorway um and those are the kind of things that we're sort of having to to come around We've got clients that are extremely happy with what we do and that's brilliant and whatever. And then we have clients that will count every single knife and fork and spoon and everything. Um, so, so there's a, a lot that, that kind of goes into Furnish My Property. Um, and also we do more than other furniture companies. Um, as I said, you know, we know from a, a management point of view, what works and why why that specific furniture works there's nothing that we take out to clients that we haven't tried out ourselves um so i'll just show you a little bit of um some of our rooms and some of our furniture and what it is that we do um for these ones we've done all of the design plans so what we'll do is we will um, work with the client we'll um draw up on the um, floor plans exactly what needs to be painted how when and where we'll send a list um, for their contractor to follow of all of the materials um, and so we make it really really easy and then we're on hand if their contractor has any questions about how a wall should be painted where it should be painted all of those kind of things and then we know the look of the property so we know exactly what furniture we are gonna put in afterwards that's then going to go with the interior design choices as well. Um, we do just do the plans on their own. We do do just furnishing on their own as well, um, but we offer everything. Um, we, we know the things from a management point of view that tenants want in the property and tenants expect. And now that um, the service accommodation market and the HMO market are becoming more and more competitive, what we're finding, we will look at other um, competitors in the area, what they're doing, what your tenant demographic or guest demographic would prefer, and then we work around that to make something different and something that's going to stand out. Um, one thing that we found at the start, we made a business model in central sourcing where it was all very cookie cutter so it was this paint this kitchen this bathroom and it was the same every single time and we thought that that would make it really really easy um for the contractors and we kind of would build a brand and that's that's how it would be and then all of a sudden once you get to a certain amount of rooms and you go on to spare room and then all of your adverts look exactly the same it just didn't look very good. So um, that's when we sort of had to think around, you know, 
what it is that we can add interior wise also it makes a massive difference to your room standing out of you know in a in a busy crowd um but also the kind of prices that you can demand um you know the the room rates that we used to get for you know our bog standard gray furniture wall um you know white walls white kitchen is very very different to the price point that we get for some of these rooms let's go on to the next one so here we've got some of our communal spaces um here we do like a a jazzy wallpaper and a feature wall here and there and um, we try and use sort of different textures and 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 make everyone different like i like i said um so that's furnished my property uh that's the sort of furnishing of side of everything and that brings us on to our property management agencies um so rent a room started from um i met my now partner um through property uh he's an investor himself um and it was something where I sort of thought, right, okay, how am I going to build a lettings agency? I have nothing, I have no knowledge on this. I don't know what I'm doing. So again, it was down to educating myself and finding out exactly what it was that I needed to do. Um, but also I'm only one person and my strengths are not admin and not systems in the slightest. Um, I have the attention span of a gnat um as you can probably see i can talk for england um but when it comes to anything kind of admin wise um you might as well just yeah no it's 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 not me um so i needed within my business i needed somebody that had different strengths to me to make it work um and i kind of said to him oh you know do you fancy doing sort of a couple of hours a week consulting for me helping with the systems um it's just you know going to be a, a small thing um and then here we are now with rent a room um we've grown from 20 to 450 units now um in in quite a short space of time um and that is a mixture of rooms that have come from the properties that i have sourced um we also manage our own rooms um, but we're also now taking on, well, have been taking on external landlords for the last couple of years. Um, but we're very, um, what's, um, we're very particular about who we'll work with. And that's not because we think that we're above anyone or we don't want to work with people. We've, you know, built a standard of what we would want as landlords our managing agent to do um, and there's a lot of landlords out there especially within the hmo market that we just don't align with and we don't agree with and don't treat the tenants like they should be treated and those people we don't want to manage their property so we've never ever massively marketed ourselves to external landlords to take on new business but what has happened organically over the past few years is people have just watched us grow and gone oh okay i want to hear more about this also you know our usp is that we again like furnish my property rent a room does exactly what it sends, says on the tin um i do get a lot of people ringing up and asking for houses and i do kind of say you realize you've re you've wrong rent a room you know you do realize that the police kind of in the title um but hey god loves the trier so um so yeah so so rent a room we just wanted to specialize in hmos that's all we do you know there's a lot of agents out there um and as landlords ourselves it's kind of like oh you know i specialize in sales and i specialize in buy to lets and i specialize in in hmos and i specialize in this and i specialize in that you can only specialize in one thing um and we do hmos and i'm proud to say we do hmos really really well um it's not without its challenges um you know especially within our kind of within our well within both agencies it's not without their chat without our their without our without its challenges sorry um yeah it's not without its challenges and you know there's been growing pains along the way it's been a business that again we've had to work really really hard in 
we've done every single role within this business um, to get to a point where we knew what those roles were and we could put the right team in place. Um, rent a room I'm really proud to say, is one of those businesses where Russ and I could decide not to go in tomorrow and it would still run. And that's always, always been a goal in my mind. You know, when we've been called out at two o'clock in the morning when the fire alarm's gone off, or the ceiling falls through on top of a tenant because there's a leak that from the upstairs on suite that she's not told us about. Um, you know, the, the kind of Christmas Eve um, phone calls because, you know, somebody's, you know, defecated somewhere or <laughs> something like that. Um, that's That was always the goal that, that, that one day we won't have to take those calls. Um, and we're lucky enough now to have a fantastic team that are that are in between that that do deal with all of those. Um, so we are um, we're really really proud of the fact that that we we have a high occupancy rate within our rooms. Um, that does change from time to time, not because we have a lot of rooms empty, um, but because we'll be adding more rooms um, to to the agency, and then that 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 alters that figure a, a little bit. Um, COVID for us was actually not a positive thing because that COVID wasn't positive, but but we were really, really lucky and we're really grateful that our company strived through COVID, which we didn't think it would do. We were extremely worried at the start and it was funny how we thought the city centre properties would be absolutely fine and um, the ones on the outskirts would be the ones that would be in trouble, but it was the other way around. Um, with our properties in the city centre in Coventry, it was more about looking after our existing tenants, um, working with them, with paying rent and, you know, getting them new jobs and um, working with different benefits that they could get to see them through and all of those kind of things. It was more about looking after the tenants that we had in place, whereas a lot of the working towns were blue collar tenants and um, they worked within the sector that just kept going, you know, um, delivery drivers, um, working on industrial estates, working in supermarkets, working in hospitals. And for some of those towns, it was like it didn't even happen. Um, and that for us taught us why it was so important to have um, a mixed tenant demographic. So we cover the whole of the tenant demographic and that is where Homely comes into play. So Homely um, is a letting agency that we purchased, um, well, it was last year, but it, it went through for ages. So it was a, an agency that had been owned by, um, been handed down from father to son, um, but it'd been in their family for about 30 years and there was massive, massive emotional attachment there. Um, and the big thing that, you know, kept putting it off and he kept blaming COVID and, oh, you know, we'll, we'll sort it out, we'll sort it out, we'll, we'll get to that point. And, you know, <laughs> we, We'd taken on more staff to be able to handle the, the capacity of rooms that we were going to be bringing on when we acquired Homely. Um, there, was, there was a lot there. We'd raised the finance to be able to buy the company. Um, and it was really quite painful getting to the point. And, and one day we just had to, we had to sit down um, and talk to him and sort of say, you know, what's going on? Because, you know, we, we're hanging on, um, nothing seems to be happening, we don't seem to be going anywhere. Um, and, and a lot of it came down to the fact that he just didn't want to retire because he was worried that he'd have nothing to go out for in the day um, and he'd have nothing to do. And, um, you know, he just wanted that get up in the morning and feel wanted feeling. Um, also, Homely is for vulnerable tenants. So he had built up relationships with these tenants. He felt like he had to look after them. Handing over this agency was a massive thing. Um, we're still very close with him and he pops into the office most days and he's probably the busiest man I've, I've ever met. And the other day I said to him, it's a good job you're retired, isn't it? Because, you know, you'd have no, no time for, for everything else that you're doing. Um, but Homely needs to be looked after in a whole different way to rent a room. So as I said, Homely is the vulnerable side. Um, it's tenants that 
they're very low priced rooms. Um, it's tenants on all, you know, incapacity benefit or they can be working and they have top ups and they're the demographic where for a lot of our clients, a lot of our landlords, they can't take these type of tenants because it's either in their lending criteria or their insurance or they just want to keep their properties professional house shares. Um, so the homely side offers, you know, a different kind of accommodation. Now, they're not fancy feature walls and, you know, amazing ornate furniture and all of those kind of things. You know, it's <laughs> magnolia and it's compliant and it's safe and it's nice and it's warm, but it serves its purpose. Um, but we have to have we have to look after them slightly more. So every Friday, our property manager, Ryan, will go and do the rounds of the homely rooms. Um, a lot of them are on um, still on meters and things. He'll he'll go and get them their electric cards. But more than anything, um, we have to do the Friday rounds because we just need to check that they're OK. Um, we've had a few suicides um, in our homely rooms um, just because of the sort of mental struggles that they can be going through. Um, we also have a lot of um, a lot of the homely guys are a lot older, um, so it will just be getting to that that point of of life where, you know, they they basically they take that room and they've got nowhere else to go, um, and so we sort of have to look after them in a different way and go around and have a chat. Um, you know, we have one guy that we were clearing his room and. Um, he had no one he had absolutely no one and um we found christmas cards in his bedroom that he'd wrote to himself because he literally had nobody else so every year we make sure we go and do the christmas rounds on christmas eve we go and take them some chocolates and we go and take them a card and for some of them that'll be the only gift that they get that year um so so yeah so they they, they take a slightly different different looking after but there's a lot more, we get a lot more back from that agency. Um, they're just really, really happy to have a safe, warm, dry, nice roof over their head with, with an agency that, that looks after them, make sure that they're okay. Um, it's a different kind of management, whereas rent -a room is the professional market. Now that's blue collar workers, right through to white collar workers. We've got all different. Um, some of our tenants are sort of, you know, 16K a year stacking shelves, right up to some of our engineers that are on between 45 to 90K a year. Um, so, so we cover the whole market and, and that's really helped me with what I've been able to source and what I've been able to find and, and how we've been able to grow. Um, so our team here, um, we actually have more of us than, than um, is on there, but we haven't updated our caricature in a long time. Um, but the only way that we can keep our agency going is by having these people in place. Um, we have in-house maintenance, we have in-house cleaners, we have our property manager, we have our lettings agents, we, have, we do in-house referencing, um, everything we do in-house and it and it keeps everything going and that is how we can keep to a point in our occupancy you know a lot of people will ring up that are looking to invest in the areas that we manage and go you know what's your occupancy rate what's the market like what's this like what's that like well for us all we do is rooms and I have a team that their specific job is to just make sure that we fill rooms and then we look after the tenants afterwards in those rooms so that's what means that we can kind of build and grow what what we're doing um then on to our investments and what we're doing so finally i got to a point where um i could then sort of start to invest myself um, and grow my property portfolio um and build build what i'm doing um and this is typically the kind of investment that that we will do um we tend to do sort of six seven bed um big sort of terrace houses over three stories um adding value to them and turning them into um properties that are then um 
are then valued on a commercial basis. That does depend area to area because in some of the areas we're still only getting a hybrid of bricks and mortar and commercial. Um, but because we know what we're doing, we know our room rents, we know our area, that, that pays a, a, a massive part in, in what we're doing and the, the kind of properties that, that we find um, and how we grow our portfolio. I Now that I invest myself it's like anything I've got quite an obsessive personality I want to go I want to find more properties I want to buy them all and do it all you know and and Russ my partner calms me down and makes me realize that I can't do everything and it's okay to just do you know a few really good things at a time um, and and that's why I'm, I'm extremely lucky to have him um, here's some of our rooms. Um, what we tend to do with our investments that, that we do personally is we like to create something that is um, a little bit different to what's in the market um, with our interior um, and, and how our rooms are and, and the kind of um, environment that we create for our tenants um, with a kind of co-living space we're very um, picky about who's living together how it's going to work um, and and everything and um, and yeah so that's that's our investments um, and this is our next project that we're doing um, so we have moved on from doing just HMO projects, um, as in sort of the, the smaller HMO projects, and wanted to start looking at commercial for ourselves as well. Um, again, that came from the fact that it's been an extremely busy, hot market, and for the kind of returns that, that we would want, we just weren't finding properties. Um, I started to think, should we build up our buy to let portfolio or you know how should we do it and then um the coach that we work with suddenly said well why don't you just take one big property and do a load of buy to lets but in one property um so that's when i started looking at commercial property again had no idea what i was doing so very quickly learned um the only reason that i'm i'm doing a deal like this at the moment is because i have somebody encouraging me helping me um but it was a property that i drive past every single day um i saw the board go up we booked a viewing and um before i could put an offer in because we were umming and ahhing about how it worked um, and kind of probably self-doubting ourselves a little bit because um, it was the biggest project that, that we've ever done. Um, we really took our time and it got snapped up by um, an investor who lives in London. Um, so, right, okay, so I just did the normal thing of like I do with all of the properties that I find that we miss out on just the follow-up um but i probably followed up a little bit too much with this one to the point where i think the agent just you know borderline stalking wanted me to stop ringing him emailing him messaging him so so we managed to get the property um the investor actually pulled out because he wasn't from the area um he wasn't sure how it was going to work he wasn't sure whether he wanted to do it whether that's what he wanted to um, invest in so then as soon as it became available because I'd pestered the agent so much. Um, he came back and said, "Look, you know, it's available," and and that's uh, that's where we 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 found it. And it's something that people probably wouldn't have looked at for what we want to do with it. Um, we've had to go through a long process with planning, um, but there's been so many learnings um, within that um and that process and, and what we're doing now with the the new projects that we found like this that we're going to be doing there's a lot of things that we would do from the start regarding planning and plans and architects and all of those kind of things but it's it's just all stuff that that you learn along the way um and this is going to be run as studios but if you can kind of see from the colors on them um they're clusters so even though each room will be en suite and have their own kitchenette area there will be one main kitchen that each cluster shares um, and that's going to help us with um, 
sort of any kind of individual council tax and and all of those kind of things um this is a property that that i managed to pick up for three hundred twenty-five thousand um with furniture and everything included it's about 300k refurb and furniture um and we're gonna value up at i think it was about 1.2 million um on this one on a commercial valuation so so our biggest project i think the cash flow was about I know that after everything, we were around four or five, um, but don't quote me on that. I do, I do on my um, social media. I've got the proper numbers, um, which which you can, if you want to follow and and have a look at those, you can do. But yeah, very excited to get my my teeth stuck into this. Um, we were given two weeks to complete on this, and um, the agent that I was dealing with left. Another agent came in, um, our planning application was in and he went, right, you've got two weeks to complete or I'm putting it back on the market with our planning in that we knew we were going to get. Um, and so it was, it was extremely stressful trying to find all of the money from down the back of the sofa to get it done um, and get it over the line. And at that point I said, right, never again not doing this again no way we've got it now why would we want to do that again and we've already secured two other commercial plots now that we're going to be doing so glutton for punishment <laughs> um, yeah so um this is a little few pictures of inside um of, of what it is currently and on our social media we're going to be documenting what we're doing so that hopefully other people can learn from our learnings and and how we're changing it i remember when i started you know walking into properties and trying to visualize how i was going to get rooms out of it how it's going to work all of those kind of things um and now we're at that point you know i can walk into a terrace house in our area i look at the floor plan i look at what we can do i go yep 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 refurb will be this done up value will be this right and i know it off by heart with something like this i think how on earth are we going to make this into 16 studios i don't quite understand so hopefully you know if you want to give us a follow and see what we're doing and and see how we're going to going to make it work um you'll also see from the um inflatables and the face paints and all that kind of stuff whilst we were waiting for planning um we used it for our son's second birthday to have a party in because we couldn't do anything else with it rather than hire another venue we thought right might as well um might as well throw a party in there um so that's what we did um and then that just really brings me on to the reason why I do all this the reason why if I didn't dye my hair I'd be extremely grey um why I'm a, I look a hell of a lot older than I actually am um it's it's for my why it's for my kids um my background even though I had extremely loving parents um I lost my dad and I had um a very unstable background in the fact that I had a very loving family but we didn't have stability because we moved all over the place from having a very very stable home we were moving all over the place we didn't know what was happening um, at one point we had absolutely nothing we lost everything and, and we were living out of our car um, and that was probably one of the hardest points um, of my of my life I was a kid at the time and you kind of you sort of bounce it off um, and then you realize sort of years down the line how much it's actually affected you and how scary it was um, and I never ever ever want my kids to feel unstable um, I've had um, the point before um, where I it was just me and my daughter and we had nothing we didn't have a roof over our head we didn't have family anywhere near and um, and I've worked really really hard to get to a point um, where you know we've built something i met my now partner and um and we're growing our businesses and and everything that we're building is just for our freedom and for our security and for our future and if anyone deserves it um it's my two little ones so um so yeah so anyway thank you ever so much for listening i'm sorry if i've waffled on um, I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody has, um, but a big thank you for letting me talk to you um, 
um you know tonight and and kind of talk about my my story and everything thank you very much for listening